Well, I absolutely love visits in the studio, and today is uh, one of those days. Special time today because Jason Kirkness joins us from Manitoba. Well, you didn't come from Manitoba. You've been uh, you've been working hard. You've been touring. Yeah, uh, I'm on radio tour right now, and for uh, all the folks at home, that's basically where you go from station to station and say, so uh, what do you think of my new song? <laughs> <laughs> We like your new song. Excellent. How's the radio tour been? It's been super fun. Um, I kind of kick it old school with, uh, I've been just living in the back of my old Montana. Um, I know a lot of people hear that and then they're like, oh, that's horrible. How could you? And all those sort of questions. Uh, It does have a queen size bed. My CPAP's all hooked up. I'm good. Uh, So you're, you're, you're riding comfy in the van. Well, in 2019, I took the year off and, uh. I lived in the van for five months, and I went off and did that whole hashtag van life thing. Um, so I got kind of good at it. I wouldn't recommend this for like a January trip for if it's your first time doing it. But uh, yeah, I got the heater. I got like it's. I got the battery backup for everything, so I have like normal electricity, and uh, yeah, I got all my spots. Little car camping. It's fantastic. That's a perfect setup. Yeah. Are you a Chris Farley fan? Uh, I know where we're going with this. <laughs> <laughs> Have you had it down by the river? Yes. Oh, oh man. Love that. No, no, no government cheese, though. No, unfortunately. <laughs> so uh, since we last chatted when we had the, the pickle challenge. The pickle incident. Yeah, the p- <laughs> pickle incident. Uh, you, you have some new hardware. The Manitoba Country Music Awards, your male artist of the year. Yeah, I feel pretty, pretty groovy about that one. Uh, I kind of went through and I was like, okay, so the night of, even when they announced me, it was Kendra Kay's up on stage and she's like, ladies and gentlemen, male artist of the year, blah, blah, blah. And I kind of was like, ah, oh, I can't, oh, wait. And then everybody in my row was staring at me like, Kirky, get going. And I was like, oh, yeah, that's me. I'm Jason Kirkness. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I would imagine that felt pretty surreal. Yeah. It, I Well, again, I've been nominated for 15 awards, and this was the first one that I'd managed to to actually take home the hardware. So I, it was so unexpected, and, uh, yeah, I just kind of got into this, like, weird dream world, and, like, I don't remember making the speech. Obviously, I did because there's video of it. Uh, I hadn't actually really prepared anything. I just knew, like, I wanted to say, like, Thanks to Rick, obviously my management and Sakamoto and everybody who's kind of been on board in the in the last bunch of years and just uh, kind of spaced out. And I don't know if I said any of that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's like a like a dreamlike state. Uh, so has that has winning that because I mean, that's a that's a pretty big vindication to your art skills. Has that sort of uh, powered given extra any extra power to your drive as an artist? Has that changed anything for you at all? Uh, yeah, it does. You know, the thing that happened kind of most recently was uh, just a few weeks ago. I was on the flight back from Toronto to Winnipeg, and when you don't do music like 365 days a year, it's kind of more of a like play your dates and over the summer and do a radio tour and maybe do like couple of breweries and that sort of thing, you kind of sometimes maybe forget seven days a week that other people are listening to you. So I'm sitting in the airplane and I'm just about to fall asleep and all of a sudden I see a guy doing like the guns at me and going, anywhere the night goes. Oh, no way. Yeah, they're just (laughs) somebody I totally didn't recognize is singing my songs at me. (laughs) So it was kind of like, oh, yeah, I forgot people know this stuff. (laughs) So, like, it's safe to say then that the past year especially has been a pretty major turning point in your music career. So where you're at right now, if you could, and I mean, it's a cliche question, but it's a good question. If you could go back to when you first thought maybe this could be a thing in your life, what would you say to yourself that you maybe wouldn't have prepared for either way? Um, I think success comes to people when they're ready for it. Mm-hmm. And if you try to force being successful, whatever your definition of that thing is and whatever industry you're in, if you try to force your uh, the things that you want from being successful, like I want to be rich, so therefore I have to do really well at the thing, or I, I want to have this car, so therefore I have to do th- this thing, mm-hmm. that thing is going to suffer. So as soon as you're focused, and certainly with music, as soon as you're focused on making the music 
rather than what you get from it. And when you focus on like what you want to make and what you want to put in the world and what's legitimately your contribution to like the greater society, I think that that's when people will naturally be drawn to what you're doing more so than like, I made this and I think it'll fit on radio and I think it'll make me famous. Yeah. That won't work. So like the, the perver- proverbial grind, like when, when it starts feeling less like you're, you're doing a fun thing and it starts feeling like a chore, then you, you take a step back and then you sort of reevaluate. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, and then like when you're actually having fun doing it, I mean, fans and listeners and viewers, I mean, they, they clue in on that. I mean, for example, you on social media, I've noticed the, the videos you've been posting on Instagram and I think TikTok, uh, they're so fun to watch when you're doing like the, when <laughs> the you're, challenges and the, stuff. The challenges, yeah. the, the country music song challenges. Uh, you had one uh, right at the new year. And it, it told you how you're going to be starting the year off. And it, oh, yeah. <laughs> it, it told you rich but single. I'm assuming neither of those things are true. Uh, no. <laughs> no. <laughs> I think that's why I've never laughed hard at those. Like, predict your this. And it's always oh, like, oh, no. <laughs> right. My girlfriend's going to be mad. <laughs> <laughs> so if you were to summarize the beginning of 2024 in two actual words, then what would you say? I'm having a great time. That's good. Yeah. That's good. Everything's just kind of coming together, and um, I'm having fun with music and life and everything. It's It's been really great. Any New Year's resolutions that you're trying to adhere to? Absolutely not. Good. Yeah. Good. <laughs> it's like I feel like if you make a resolution, then you're just dooming that thing to not happen. Definitely. So uh, we run a segment in the afternoon called Ride It or Buck It. That's when we put a new song up. We show it to our listeners, and they vote whether we should keep playing it or not keep playing it and based on the votes i mean we we go according to that uh the song right where i want you is the current song on ride it or bucket so that's the one currently getting the votes oh cool why should people vote for this song uh it's a great song i agree (laughs) i totally agree um that's a that's a johnny on the spot kind of question i guess (laughs) you're Uh, in the hot seat now yeah uh you know I think if it's something that they hear it and they respond well to it and if it's sort of resonates with like how they want to be treated in a relationship or how they want to treat their significant other or how they're feeling right now, um, yeah, hit that, uh, hit that ride it button. It's a very sweet song. Uh, how did this one come together? Um, so this is a bit of a long story. And I've I'm, been try- I'm here for it, I've man. been trying to get this down to a more concise version of the story. Um, in November at the MCMAs, we debuted my next single, which was a song called What Got Me Here, which is obviously the story of like getting from, you know, being a teenager with a dream to, you know, here. Mm-hmm. Um, it's sort of a universal theme and there's a bunch of universal sort of stories in that as well. But um, we got the studio version done and it was sounding pretty good and I think it's really close and I think it'll be the next single. But um we got this one back uh, at the same time, right before the Christmas break. And Sean, who is the producer that I work with in the studio, he's like, oh, yeah, I think this is really good. It's pretty close. I need to bring the shaker down. And there's a steel part that maybe could be a bit louder. And I was like, dude, I already sent it to radio. And he's like, what? And I was like, yeah. He's like, it's not even mastered. And I was like, yeah, it's already on Spotify. <laughs> we already got a bunch of playlists. And, uh, yeah, I'm already I'm going on radio tour in two weeks. And he's like, what? And it's like it kind of came through really quickly like I just heard the song when the finished version came back and I was like that's the next song that's the, that's the song and uh, I think for me it just really resonated with where I'm at in my life and I heard it and I just, the music and the lyrics and everything kind of came together when you're making the songs in the studio this is kind of the thing like I do my parts and then that's acoustic guitar vocal and I send that to Sean and then he gets the drums and all that stuff kind of together and then he sends it back and then maybe I'll do a final vocal or maybe some fixes on my parts and then send it back to him and then he does the mix and then uh, for me a lot of times like I don't necessarily know what the final version is until till the end either like mm-hmm. it, it doesn't necessarily have a direction it's just like what is that F-A-F-O <laughs> 
Never mind. <laughs> 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 I saw you just put that one together, and you're like, oh. <laughs> So, and I really like that, how you, you sort of sent the song away while they were uh, still thinking about details in the song. Do you find that uh, as an artist, once you start sweating over tiny details, the, the magic of the song can start getting lost? Absolutely. Yeah. Right? Um, the coolest thing about the modern world and Spotify and all of the DSPs and that whole thing that's now a thing is that like you can have a song that you wrote Oh, you know, go to the studio, get the mix back. And instead of like, well, we have to wait till there's like a package to put this with and like a CD or a, an EP or whatever you're doing, like you can have that out to people minutes after you have it. Well, and I mean, if uh, in the initial jam stage, I mean, if a, if a song sounds good and it, it, if it's hitting, you got to kind of leave it there, right? Like you've, you've sort of captured that lightning in a bottle and, you tamper with it a little bit more, you might run the risk of, of hurting what that whatever that lightning in a bottle was. Yeah, and certainly in those situations when you have those moments of just the absolute magic, anything that you're going to do is probably going to take away rather than add to. Newly crowned Manitoba Male Country Artist of the Year, Jason Kirkness. Uh, where's next for you on your radio tour? Uh, I'm getting all the way. Like, I've already been to the West Coast. Mm -hmm. I'm going to go home for the weekend. And then... Uh, all the way out to Halifax and back. Oh, wow. How, how long is that going to take you? Uh, at least another two weeks. And you're doing all the driving yourself. Yeah. Are you tired? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, just uh, think of that long, nice first rest once this is all said and done, when you get back home, how sweet that'll be. Even on the weekend, that'll be nice. Yeah, I'm looking forward to that. Uh, I'm going to take three or four days off, and then uh, I'm going to head down to Mardi Gras. Ooh. A couple days in New Orleans. That'll be fantastic. Yeah. And then just home in time for Valentine's Day. That's just perfect. <laughs> what a what a way to kick off 2024. It's been wild. And then going back to, I asked you about New Year's resolutions. So excluding that, what are your plans for the year? Do you have any tour plans? Do you have any release plans? What's, uh, what's up your sleeves right now? Uh, the album's coming out. As soon as I get mixes, I'm just loading them up on, on the playlist on Spotify. So we're not doing like a traditional like, hey, you got to wait for it and all of that stuff. Just... As we finish the song, we just add it on. Um, so that's going to be ongoing throughout the year. Uh, and then obviously there'll be another single probably for summer. And uh, I got a whole bunch of dates coming up throughout the throughout the summer months. Um, and we're adding to that fairly regularly. And then uh, I just found out yesterday that I got offered a couple of dates in the UK. So I got Ooh. my fingers crossed to make that happen. And then obviously uh, we've released the last three singles as well in Australia. So in into 2025, I think over the, over January because it's summer there, then we'll probably get a bunch of dates over there as well. Well, congratulations on that. That's very exciting. Yeah, I got my fingers crossed for a whole bunch of stuff. Congrats for that. Congrats on the uh, Manitoba Country Music Association Male Country Artist of the Year. Thank you for coming by to visit us. Uh, anytime. And I think we got to eat that hot chip next time. Yeah, so we were talking about that. <laughs> when you were here uh, last time we were doing the pickle challenge, it was the, the hot chip challenge we said was going to be the next one. And yeah. I was a little bit worried that you were going to remember that. And then when you brought it up, when you, you arrived here today, I had completely forgotten about it. So the look you gave me, I was kind of scared that you brought it. I was so happy that you forgot about it. <laughs> <laughs> so that's, that's, that's inevitable. It's going to happen eventually. Fair. I've seen videos of people doing that chip challenge. It looks like it sucks. I'm in. Let's do this. Do you do well with spicy food? Uh, usually, yeah. yeah. Do you do well with like that level of spicy? I'm a big fan of there's this uh, local company in Winnipeg called Intergalactic Sauces. Mm -hmm. And they've got a whole bunch of delightful sauces. And I love every single one of theirs because they don't have one that's like in that stupid Scoville's. All of theirs is like kind of delicious flavors. That's what I'm about for spicy. Yeah, I agree. Good hot sauce, yes. Like I had this, uh, I did this uh, hot wing challenge, and it, I, I don't know what kind of pepper it had on it, but it didn't taste good. It, it tasted like they took tire rubber and melted it on oh. the, the wings, it just and it was insanely hot. But like there, there gets to a point where you, you start to sacrifice the flavor for heat, and I agree. Like a good hot sauce that has a good flavor, yeah. Like something that's chili based, those are just the best.
Absolutely agree on that. Even Old Faithful, like putting Tabasco on my eggs, that's the best. Okay. Jason Kirkness, <laughs> best of luck to you. Drive safe. Enjoy the rest of your radio tour. And uh, have fun at Mardi Gras, man. I think it, this year is going to be great. 2024. Well, it's kicking off like this. I mean, it's uh, you're setting some good momentum for good things to come. Thank you very much.